Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and in this video um, we're going to be looking at creating table row links inside HTML and JavaScript. Okay, so um, the problem is uh, you can't actually make an entire table row clickable using plain HTML. So um, if I was to example try and make this entire row clickable, I could go inside the HTML and uh, basically uh, um, attempt to wrap the entire row tag inside an href, sorry, an ahref. So for example, we can say, um, we can go to uh, google.com, okay? And then we're gonna simply uh, try to wrap this um, over that. So now you have this anchor tag over the entire table row. Um, you might expect this to work. If I was to save this and refresh the browser, unfortunately it does not work. So if I was to try and click on the table row, we get nowhere. Okay, so we're going to use JavaScript to actually, uh, you know, get around this problem and then make each one of these table rows clickable. All right, so um, I've actually loaded up here jQuery, but you don't need jQuery to achieve this effect or, you know, perform this workaround. Um, you can use plain JavaScript, but I'm going to show two examples. The first one's going to be in plain JavaScript. The second one's going to be with jQuery. Okay, so. Um, let's go down here and just remove this anchor tag surrounding this TR All right, and go back to square one. So um, what we're going to do is we're basically going to add a custom attribute to each one of these table rows and that'll be like, um, that'll act like the ahref attribute. Okay, so um, let's go inside each one of these TRs and we're going to add an attribute and we're going to call it data-href. Okay, so this is a custom attribute because it is prefixed with the data dash, okay? And we've chosen to use the name href, all right? So inside here, we can add our link. So we can say, once again, we can go to google.com and here we can go to wikipedia.org and here we can go to intel.com, all right? So um, as I said, we're adding uh, the custom data attribute called href to each one of these table rows. So um, for those of you who do know, obviously this href is added to this element data set. Okay, so um, pretty straightforward, uh, just like custom attribute added to each one of these table rows. Okay, so now um, basically we're going to look through the entire document using JavaScript and when we find one of these table rows with a data href attribute, we're going to say when that item gets clicked, we're going to go to that particular link. Okay, so inside the JavaScript, we can begin by waiting for the document to be loaded up. So we're going to say uh, document .add event listener. We're going to listen for the DOM content loaded event. So this just means once the browser is fully aware and has loaded your entire HTML structure, we're going to run this function right here. Alrighty, so inside here now we can begin by getting each one of these table rows so we can make a new constant and call this one rows equal to document dot query selector all and i'm going to pass in here tr and then open square bracket data dash href and then close the square bracket so this is just saying uh, select all of the table rows which have an attribute called data-href, all right? So now I can just simply console.log rows and we should see three rows inside the console. So I can save this and refresh the browser. In the console, we get a node list, uh, basically uh, like an array containing three uh, table rows, all right? So now uh, we can basically loop through each one of these rows and then add an event listener to each row. So we can say uh, rows dot for each, all right? So for each row, we're gonna run this function uh, right here. Okay, so using the ES6 shorthand function, um, we're gonna say uh, for each row, we'll say uh, row dot add event listener. We're gonna listen for the click events. Okay, so when, when one of these rows gets clicked on, we can simply say window.location.href is equal to row.dataset.href. So um, to explain this, 
we're looping through each one of these rows. So this function right here is going to run three times, one for each row. Now for this particular row right here, which will be each one of these as the loop goes on, I'm going to say row, on click, we're going to run this function right here, and this one is going to change the uh, location.href of the browser. Basically it just means change the address bar, so uh, it emulates actually you know clicking on a link. We're going to change the href, or we're going to link to row.dataset.href. So dataset basically means all the attributes that are prefixed with data dash, and then href, we're selecting our href right here. So basically this right here uh, links to that right there. Or more specifically, it links to the value right there. All right. So now I can save this and then refresh the browser and click on one of these links or one of these table rows and now we actually go to the particular um, you know, destination. All right, so if you wanted to, you can of course just go up in the CSS and add the actual uh, pointer cursor. So we can say style and we can just say once again tr data-href selecting all of the rows with the data-href attribute we can say cursor is going to be pointer. So I can now save this and refresh and now we get the actual uh, pointer cursor when you hover over the table row. Alright, so um, that works you know, well and good but there's a problem with this method and that is if you were to add a new table row once the page has loaded up it's not going to work. So basically as I've, as I've demonstrated here if we were to console.log the rows, and save this and refresh, it only loops through and applies the event listener to each one of these three table rows. So now, if I was to use the website and somewhere in your code you actually add a, you know, a new row to this list, then that obviously wasn't part of this array, so it's not going to be added and it's not going to work um, with the whole event listener stuff. All right, so um, to get around this. Um, we can use a delegated event listener. So this just means instead of attaching the event listener to each one of these table rows, we're going to instead attach the event listener to the actual HTML body and then check if it was a table row. If it was, then obviously go to that particular link. All right, so I'll just show you it's easier to explain with an example. All right, so um, let's go inside uh, the uh, text editor and create a function which is going to add a new table row to the actual table. So let's uh, let's go down here and we're going to say uh, function. I'm going to call this one add John. So we're going to add a new person called John to this list. All right, so add John is basically just going to um, I'm going to say document dot query selector, and it's going to just select the uh, the first T body, so this one right here. And we're going to say dot insert adjacent HTML, and we're going to say before end. So this just means uh, insert some HTML before the table body um, tag ends. So down here as a last element. All right, we're going to we're going to append this HTML right here. We're going to say uh, tr, let's copy this actually, I'll copy this, put it down here and just change the, um, the values so we can say for example amd.com, we can say uh, john, we can say 25 and this person is an engineer. So we're just basically adding this new table row um, to the end of the first t body. Alright, so now I can save this and then refresh. Um, obviously these links still work, um, but if I was to go inside the console and actually call that add John function, all right, press enter and now John gets added, that's fine, but unfortunately um, the link does not work. Okay, so that's the issue right there. So to make this work, as I said, we're going to use a delegated event listener. So this is where jQuery comes in. So 
Um, you can of course use plain JavaScript to create a delegated event listener. I've actually made a video on this, so I'll link it in the description or in a comment, okay? But um, for simplicity, we're gonna use jQuery to achieve this. So I'm gonna basically just comment out this previous code, alrighty, and add some jQuery. So down here, uh, we're gonna use the, uh, the typical document dot ready, all right? And inside here, once the document is loaded up, we're going to do a very similar thing. But we're gonna say this. We're gonna say uh, document dot body, and then on click, and add as the second argument here, the same selector as this one right here. So tr, and then data href. Okay, cool. So now, inside the function, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna say window.location.href is equal to this.dataset.href. So in this case right here, it looks very similar, but what's happening is we're basically adding an event listener, a single event listener to um, document.body. So when it gets clicked on, we're checking if that click event was on a table row with data href attribute. And if it was, then we're gonna change obviously this code right here. So this works because we're starting with the body and then checking for a TR. Whereas up here, we are applying the event listener directly to the pre-existing table rows. So that's the difference right there between a regular event listener and a delegated event listener. Okay, so as I said, I made a full video on this if you wanna actually check it out. But anyway, um, if I was to now save this and then refresh the browser um, and now click on these uh, table rows, they work completely fine. And if I was to go back and once again, just add John to the end of that, then click on John, that also works. All right, so that right there is how you can um, add or create table row links using HTML and JavaScript. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.